Aloha Hawaii and to all you YouTube followers out here and welcome to another episode of Where the Drone Leads right here on Think Tech Hawaii. And uh, introducing myself, I'm the co-host Michael Motas and we have a very special guest speaker, Mr. Mike Elliott. Mike Elliott, thank hey, you for coming. Nice to see you again, Mike. Pleasure. Face it's to face this time instead face of to Skyping face. it, right? Right, yeah. right, yeah. right. Uh, thank you for being here. How, how's the company and how's things going? How was this past year for you? Well, Things are uh, actually going pretty well. Um, the industry is making a lot of great moves in the right direction with, uh, you know, Absolutely. finally the 107 rule set that actually is codified into law, ex mm -hmm. ex where the 333 process for drone operators for commercial ops were, uh, was an ex exemption from the rules. Right. Now we actually have rules. Uh, you've seen great progress, uh, the drone racing world. We had uh, drone worlds here back in October. Right. Um, a number of different countries that were here for that period of time, racing out of Kualoa Ranch, uh, first of one ever, you know, type of event here in Hawaii, and those guys are going to be coming back again. So you know, it's a you know uh, really amazing opportunity. Uh, work, uh, commercial work, has really taken off as more people understand what drones are capable of and what types of uh, uh, jobs that these can do, what kind of services that you can be provided with mm -hmm. these types of systems, not just taking photos and video, but um, you know, mapping, assisting in search and rescue. Um, infrastructure inspection, I mean, you name it, it just keeps growing every right. single day. Just, uh, um, just to make clear about Drone Services Hawaii, where can our followers go ahead and find you folks on, on, online? Is that at? Yeah, at our website, it's just DroneServicesHawaii.com. Drone and also we've got nice. uh, you know, a small store here off of Dillingham and a small one over on Maui. And we're just trying to service the local community with uh, you know, the things that they need and uh, be a resource to them and an advocate. Uh, right. We also help with uh, 107 classes uh, to help people get uh, the 107 license. And then, but also teach them how to conduct drone operations in a, uh, in a smart, safe um, manner in which the FAA is looking to see this happen. And if we do this as a community, then there's really not a lot of need for outside assistance from people who don't know really what we do or how we do it. We right. can, can self-police and self-regulate, and the more of us that are operating by that a common standard uh, will make for a safer environment and one that will be prosperous you know, for everybody. You know, Mike, I, I really am, enjoy that, the fact that you say community, and um, just to, right, we're at the end you know, 2016, and uh, what we would like to do is kind of draw back as to what kind of projects that uh, the drone community been getting involved with, like you mentioned about the racing and all. Uh, uh, for you followers out there, it, it was a amazing event, right? Um, a lot of people came over from uh, all over the all over the world, pretty yeah. much, to see this event. And um, what kind of other projects that you would like to highlight with, with drone services, Hawaii? Well, for? just in general, we've started to see. Uh, Drones being utilized in yes. some actual uh, TV productions mm -hmm. and uh, some movies mm -hmm. that are being done here in Hawaii, which is great. You know, that's uh, opportunity for local operators and stuff to be able to participate in some of those things. Right. Uh, a number of TV commercials that have been done legally and some not so legally uh, yeah. have happened, but, you know, working on that. Uh, great coordination and discussion with the film offices for the state and city county, yes. you know, trying to introduce. Um, uh, ourselves and others as uh, drone operators who are trying to do things legally and within the bounds of the law and within the guidelines that they set forth uh, so that it, it just allows uh, open opportunity in a lot of locations that are normally managed by city, county, or state property right. <clears throat> and would open those up to be able to shoot uh, drone footage. You know, whether it's for TV commercial, a TV show, film project, you know, in some of these locations. So, you know, it's uh, it's been a lot of work, and there's been a lot of people that have been involved uh, in doing this. Uh, folks yep. like uh, George Russell uh, has been really working hard. Jonah Shaw uh, working very closely with the film office, and a number of other people. Eric Sturman, what a great guy doing surf photography <coughs> and video, uh, working with World Surf League. Right. Last year in this, and doing live streaming where they're taking that video right from the drone and putting it right out on TV with folks. And then, uh, you know, I can't uh, say enough about my partners, you know, uh, George Purdy over in Lanai. Yes. Working the uh, emergency services piece and just being a great, you know, partner and uh, uh, advocate and friend. And then uh, my wife, Ellen, who's, uh, you know, always there just backing us up and taking care of so many things in the background to 
make this happen for us every single day. So for us, it's been very good. Yeah. And I think a number of other folks, and yourself included, right. you know, are seeing uh, new opportunities every single day. Yeah, absolutely. And, you mm -hmm. know, that recap kind of sets that whole tone for our community out here in Hawaii and into the drone community out into the world. The possibilities are out there. And um, just like Mike and I, we, you know, we believe, we believe in something like this that we encourage all pilots to get involved, to learn more about the rules, learn more about the industry and start building yeah. off from, off from good people that wants to do something good. And um, of course, shout out to George, right? To yeah. the business yeah. partner. I mean, and great, great guy, great advocate. Uh, you know, he's working hard, uh, doing a lot of stuff on behalf of folks here in Hawaii that a yes. lot of you don't know about, but he's working very hard. Yeah. And then, uh, you know, just to highlight one of the, you know, I guess crown jewels of something we were able to do this year was the uh, Remember Pearl Harbor project film that w air debuted on the 4th of December Ooh, nice. and, w and showed on PBS here locally on the 7th, but it's going to air again here in 2017. Uh, you know, it took us multiple months to do that. Very, very proud and humble, you know, as a retired naval officer myself, uh, to be able to participate in that project. And from that, you know, there's some other good stuff that, you know, people took note of and want to work with us to do similar things in the future. So, you know, it's, it's not just uh, the work that we're doing, but, but others too. We're able to potentially create a community that is generating jobs and from that tax revenue mm -hmm. that doesn't really require any effort from the city, county, or state. Just let it happen, let it go, and uh, just let good things happen. And there's going to be, like I said, a, a new industry really take hold here in, in, in Hawaii. Absolutely. And no, <clears throat> you mentioned about everything that we can focus here in in the state with um, especially with building the industry from the community working together and working to build a bigger uh, a bigger branch reaching into uh, like a uh, like that phrase that we would always say you know one when one boat rises all of us rise yeah. when the tide rises we all rise exactly it's very similar to what we see in this industry um looking into the community what what kind of aspects that we can do to um especially ted walston you know um ted walston is our our host here on team tech hawaii and it's very honorable to be here and to speak in front of you and speak in front of the community letting everybody know yeah. this is a possibility where an industry that can come in and help provide jobs. Yeah. Well, some of the uses that people don't even think about, uh, you know, agriculture, exactly. uh, construction, conservation even, you know, using drone systems for conservation and GIS mapping and 3D mapping. Uh, these are sy systems that allow for ease of use, uh, uh, you know, highly accurate, high resolution photo, video, and uh, different sensors that can be carried aboard that can actually do some jobs in locations that normally weren't, you weren't able to do. Mm -hmm. And then on the other side of that, you have you know, emergency services, whether it's police, fire, search and rescue. Um, <laughs> these are tools, they're just tools, yep, and that's it. Right. And once people start to think of them that way, uh, you know, that mystique that is around them will kind of go away. And I think you're gonna see more integration uh, in some of these areas, uh, companies incorporating them into their workflow or hiring individuals who are certified to come do some of this work for them in, in the coming year. So drones used as tools, that's where it's leading. That's where we're recapping, right, with 2016 where our drones are leading into tools to help solve problems in our community, one through agriculture, through uh, emergency responses, and uh, it's quite a pretty exciting thing that yeah, it is you, you're striving and, for. And we don't want to forget hobbyists either. You know, even for a hobbyist, there's, you know, there's a, a misunderstanding that there's a requirement to uh, get licensed. The hobbyists do not have to get licensed. They still fall under the basic rules of, uh, f you know, 400 feet, line of sight, five miles from an airport, right. no national parks, uh, don't fly over people, the, the basics. It takes five minutes, five bucks when you register your drone online with the FAA. That's it. Um, you know, and we always encourage people to spend some time, you know, uh, practicing in a very wide open area, use the uh, types of um, flight simulator apps that are sometimes built into some of the drones that are out there. Yes. And uh, if they ever have questions, you know, we're a resource and there's other community uh, Facebook forums and stuff that would mm -hmm. uh, here in Hawaii or on the mainland that can act as a resource to help answer questions. But we want to encourage 
uh, you know, safe, responsible flight. And, uh, you know, one of the things that we try to do is, you know, help people who are just getting started so that they feel comfortable and confident and uh, enjoy what they're doing. And some people, it's, you know, it's really been a change their lives, you know, in some ways that we never thought. Um, some folks that are in their 80s who use this as a tool to get out of the house and just go have fun and right. shoot pictures and video, but it gets them out of the house. Um, you know, something we never really thought of. Uh, you know, bringing father, son, father, daughter, mother, daughter, you know, whatever, together as a family activity. Never really kind of thought of it that way, but sometimes we've seen some cases where that's what they're doing. They're getting a drone for the family. Yeah. Uh, okay. You, you hey. know, my so it's a great, you know, great opportunity that in really uh, many ways that we never, we never thought of, but you know, we continue to work with people and encourage them. Yeah. Yeah, especially with this past holiday, uh, Christmas just around the corner. Everybody yeah. wants to, hey, mom, dad, I want that drone. <laughs> yeah. Well, speaking of that, so yeah, one of the things that's really important, you know, if you are flying and stuff, you uh, you just have to be aware of where you're at and what you're doing. Uh, one of the tools that um, you know we use, obviously, for commercial operations, mm -hmm. is uh, Sky Vector. It's a website you can go to, and you can view any of the. Uh, uh, no TAMs, notice to airmen that are up there, or temporary flight restrictions that are issued uh, because they're, it's, it is the site that the information gets entered into by the FAA for the air traffic controllers through uh, uh, was Lockheed Martin. So right now we've got an uh, example up here for the uh, uh, temporary flight restrictions. Okay. They're listed in red. So this is real-time active. You know, once two seconds after that person hits enter, it's going to show up here. This is the system that is used by... Uh, you know, the ATC, yes. air traffic controllers, anybody can log in here, just go to the website, pull up Hawaii, and you can see what's going on. Uh, if you had uh, any areas listed in there in purple, uh, they'd be uh, maybe no TAMs for drone operations that were going on. So maybe if you're working somewhere somebody else is, you'd you know, deconflict. But, uh, you know, a good tool, quick resource. Uh, there's a lot of apps out there, but some of them, where they get some of the information is kind of questionable and they don't always seem to work uh, very well together. But, um, you know, utilization of uh, something like this real quick, you can put on your phone or tablet, right. pull it up, yeah, we're good, you know, and, and at least do a quick check and stuff and just kind of see, okay, where am I? Am I inside of any airspace that might be of concern or is there a temporary flight restriction like while the president is here in Hawaii? Absolutely. Um, that's a real good message uh tool resources like you said right mike that um our new drone you know hobbyists or operators who's coming here in hawaii and we we look into it's it's a it's quite exciting to be yeah. honest to have all these operators you know we don't want to we want to make sure everybody's comfortable when they you know going out with their there's so many questions to answer and you know in in this past year 2016 we've been trying to you know in the process of having that, uh, giving people that confidence to go out, you know, and enjoy yourself, yeah. you know, and not to burden yourself with all these rules and regulations. Come visit us, see us here on this show, talk yeah. to Ted, talk Ask to Ted. Mike, yeah. <laughs> and, and speak with all of us. We'd be more than happy, yeah. you know, this is a community that w we can definitely help. You know, we're yeah. definitely approachable. I just want to get across, too, that this is a, uh, it's, it's a legal hobby. It's a legal industry. Yeah. Um, you know, and that people need to understand that there's still some folks from time to time think that what you're doing is you can't fly, that's illegal. Well, no, it's not. And it was a lot of misunderstanding from articles that were put out during 2016, some of the things that were issued by the FAA. But it's a legal hobby. It's a legal profession if you're commercially licensed. Uh, and there is a process now for that. Yeah. And it's, um, you know, it's pretty straightforward. Yeah. And uh, it's something, too, that we help a lot of people with. And uh, we encourage people to do that if that's what they want to pursue. Exactly. So we're going to take a quick break right now. And uh, we'll have our main host, Ted Walston, up on the screen. Um, we'll get back to you as soon as possible. Aloha, my name is Justine Espiritu, and I co-host Hawaii Farmers Series with Matthew Johnson of Oahu Fresh. We talk about Hawaii's local farmers and their supporters. In order to have a vibrant and sustainable local food system, uh, farmers are always the foundation, but there's so many other people uh, involved in the community that help support those farmers. So we bring those folks onto our show every Thursday at 4 p.m. 
we get their backstory, their history, find out a little more about them, and we find out why they love what they do and their perspective and their advice on how we can continue to have a dynamic and vibrant and sustainable local food system. So we, again, we broadcast live every Thursday at 4 p.m. And you can also catch us on ThinkTech's YouTube channel as well as Alelo 54. So we hope you tune in and join us. Thank you. Aloha. My name is John Waihe. And I used to be a part of all the things that you might be angry at. I served in government here and may have made decisions that affects you. So I want to invite you in. I want to invite you in to Talk Story with me and some very special guests every other Monday here at Talk Story with John Wahee. Come on in, join us, express your opinion, learn more about your state, and then do something about it. Aloha. Aloha, I'm Kawe Lucas, host of Hawaii is My Mainland, here on Think Tech Hawaii every Friday at 3 p.m. We address issues of importance for those of us who live here on the most isolated landmass on the planet. Please come join me Fridays at 3 p.m. Mahalo. Aloha and welcome back to Where the Drone Leads right here on Team Tech Hawaii. We have Mike Elliott from Drone Services Hawaii. Mike, thank you for thanks, coming. Thanks. And the, the one and only Ted Walston. Ted, thank thanks, you for Michael coming. Thanks, Michael, for letting yeah. you come on the show. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Our uh, last 2016 uh, episode here today and uh, no better place to be than right yeah. here next to Mike and next to Ted. Thank you, folks, for coming. Yeah. I mean, Ted, you know, for some of you who don't know, I mean, Ted has been uh, not only a, a mentor, but a great advocate, you right. know, here for the state of Hawaii uh, throughout a gamut of, of UAS-related issues and stuff, whether it's from the university and trying to get them to coordinate all their programs to a single source so they're not doing multiple uh, programs on top of one another, uh, commercial operations, helping with hobbyist piece and drone racing, uh, dealing with you know, test site issues and stuff. I mean, just one thing after another. And Ted's been a continuous advocate for, you know, the state. And uh, a lot of us can't thank him enough. And uh, I don't know if he's got to make an announcement here. Uh, well, Mike, I thank you very much for that, uh, that uh, disclaimer. Mm. But uh, I'd like to also <laughs> thank you guys in particular. And, of course, George Purdy, who is uh, our... George. Our virtual right. alter ego, right. not here on the table, but over on the line. And uh, a shout out to all three of you for really setting a high standard in this really confusing domain of the emergence of UAS or drones into the game. Well, it's not that confusing, I mean. Yeah. <laughs> well, I think for the average piece of it, is. it really is with you, Mike, I have really established a path forward with George and community involvement, yeah. which is essential. That's huge. Especially here in Hawaii, yeah. but that, yeah. is, that is number one on the hit parade. Yeah. And you, Mike, have established a real track in terms of how to make a commercial service that's transparent, open, and friendly. Absolutely. Trying, and, yeah. And, uh, working it, behind the scenes. And there was the a lot of things that weren't written down. I mean, it, you, it was interesting. <laughs> you get to the next page, and something that you're trying to do, there's not a lot. There's really sometimes next to nothing written down. And you, not that you're making it up as you go, but you have to work with folks to develop uh, process procedure that's necessary and, and it's interesting how talking to a lot of people that are doing this now commercially um, are actually following some of those same footsteps and it's very uh, humbling to say the least um, but to see them succeed you know where we had tried to trudge through and then also learning from others it, it's uh, it, you know it's really nice to see and to see folks do well and like I said create an industry where, where none existed with you know, no need for government support through financial assistance or anything. Let it happen. Let it grow an industry that uh, out of thin air, basically, and let the tax revenues roll in. There you go. So. And uh, <laughs> the commercial revenues as well. And we yeah. talked on a show earlier with Micah about taking on in 2017 right. uh, the year of community involvement in drones. Let's do it, Mike. It. Do. It's us. It's yeah. not Ted. And this is it. You're <laughs> off and running in Nanakuli and up in Anui Nui and uh, yep. our area is yet to be defined. And uh, that is, is so exceptional because you're not only working in the community involvement, you're working in the core of the community, which is the educational process. Yep. And to get to the kids, get the kids interested, and get them heading in that direction, they'll bring their parents along and their uncles and aunties and such. 
and we bring the whole community together by that means. You know, we all grew up just saying yes and thank you. That's all. <laughs> just say yes and thank you. And the, yeah. this is where we're at right now in, on this show, and we're talking to each other. And, you know, I can really appreciate everything that we've been doing. I mean, really, this year has been all of our ups and downs, that conference, meeting at the conference, at, and having the... Um, I'm sorry, not the conference, but over at the Capitol. At the Capitol, yeah. right. That was, that was a real experience for us, especially in, a, in this community that we can really push forward in. And um, it's the small things, right? It's always yeah. the small things that matter. And things like this, reaching out to the community or even talking and, you know, it's just those small steps that we always focus on the outcome. And the yeah. outcome is having this industry that can provide for our community, give jobs. Exactly. I mean, and, you know, the education piece is huge. You know that, you know, George has worked very closely with folks over in Maui through STEM, Women Technology Group, yes. Isla Young. Isla, love you. Great support. Yes. Um, you know, that's our future there. That's our future workforce, too. So what Mike is doing, what George is doing, what Isla, you know, working to develop that future workforce. And, and Ted, you know, working to see that through at the at the UH level too, to where there are some programs to help uh, uh, introduce those people into this industry. We have to have these kind of conversations extend beyond just the three of us here at the table. Yeah, but absolutely. Sort of a, a, a community event of some kind we have to create earlier in the year, I think, yeah. as this goes forward to bring other people into the picture. But I'd like to uh, compliment Michael again. I mentioned community involvement and that right. includes the education. Thank but you. also, this is the second time you've mentioned and observed that dealing at the Capitol is pretty essential here in Hawaii. The Absolutely. capital's where a lot of things right. happen, a lot of decisions are made, and and clear and, and, and concise information has to be delivered. And you learned that at that mm -hmm. at that aerospace conference. Let's you know, a shout out to Jim Christopher for putting that on. Yeah, yeah Jim. Uh, Jim and, uh, Mahalo Nui <laughs> and you know uh, really to Hawaii it's it's the best place for networking. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. <laughs> you go down to the capital, that's the best place to yeah. be. And then you got yeah. Senator Sparrow, what a what a huge advocate. Yeah. Right. Um, Absolutely. You know, talking to him and helping him understand the nuances of the industry and what was going on and what was and was not happening uh, really helped him see how this can move forward. The racing piece was really huge for him, too. But also as, a, as an industry, how we're working to move ahead with a lot of different stuff and uh, mm -hmm. do this commercially because he does see the opportunity for the state. Um, you know, where there's commercial opportunity, yes. and then how can we make this a simplified process for a lot of people? Uh, permitting, you know, we're still working with the city, county, and state film offices, but it's getting right. better. But we want to work to a simplified process uh, to show people that there are professional operators out here that will operate by a high level of safety and a good standard, and uh, want to work with nothing but aloha with the different state agencies involved. You know, we've uh, had actually had Senator Aspero on his show. He mm -hmm. was sitting right here about two months ago, right after the summit. And we talked about one thing he'd like us as a collective group, the three of us, plus the other 500 we can bring into the picture and generate kind of exactly what you said, a standard operating practice manual, best, best practices and standards for the state of Hawaii that include a chapter for every aspect you might think of, public safety, the film office, uh, environmental people, and have a a, a standard understanding of what it is that a user or a supplier of the services needs to think about going forward here. Yeah. Everybody can participate in that. We have something that takes yeah. a simplified guide. It doesn't have to necessarily be uh, you know hardcore written regulations or law, it's but it can be interpretation of those things and a right. guide right. that helps to make so it an easy flow path because that's what was missing between law, one, especially 107, when. And then, okay, how the heck do we do this? And there was, a, there was a gap there, and that air gap has been filled by folks like Micah and Ted and others trying to build a bridge between community and you know, rules and regulations. If we produce that document, that actually is the piece that underpins the community involvement. The larger yes. community can get involved and get involved better if we can have, have standards they can refer to that are written and are available online and such, and people can then interpret, for example, in the educational system. We got to get into the Department of Education and make yes. sure that all schools understand what the limitations yeah. are and the opportunities are and how to operate and how to structure themselves. 
So 26, 2017, 2016 was a cool year. I mean, 2016 was amazing. amazing. I mean, yeah, right. <laughs> I mean, if you would have asked us in January if we would have been where well, we are now, I don't think I don't we would have. We couldn't have foreseen the yes. future. Yeah. Just and, like, uh, 2017 has so much more in store for us, yeah. so we're going to have to make sure it happens and heads in the right direction. And that's what so. we like to really focus on this wrap up is that how we can appreciate how 2016 went for us. And yes, 2017 is right around the corner. Mm -hmm. uh, literally two days, <laughs> uh, one day. Well, in fact, and this is the very last show last on show. the station before 2017 happens. So after another five minutes, the people can go off and start entertaining right. themselves for New Year's. Happy New Year's, yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> so but that, really, yeah, so what we've seen, you know, so uh, 107 rules, rules and laws. Um, yes. You know, 107 was issued a few months back. We had a lot of folks have uh, taken the test gotten the license. So there'll be some refinement I think you're going to see with some of that uh, as from what we see from the FAA. There'll be some refinement yeah. and also um, the uh, approval process for waivers that are necessary to do certain types of jobs, fly at night, uh, inside of controlled airspace, that that process may get shortened here and in 2017. And we all can appreciate Yeah, that. I'll believe me, yeah, true. <laughs> that also points on, goes back to the Senate operating procedures because mm -hmm. as those uh, abilities to get waivers change or the methods change, uh, that'll we have to bake that back into our SOP so that people use the current system as opposed right. to something that might have been archaic in, in, in the past. The other thing we have interesting to me that coming forth in 2017, we're finally going to get going on the Hawaii component of the Pan Pacific Unmanned Air Systems Test Range, which is That's the FAA right. mandated test range function that in this case of Hawaii, Hawaii is a partner under Alaska with Oregon and Mississippi in this pan-pacific yep. operation and we have a chance to get that going and another future. great shout out to you know george purdy i mean uh you know if it wasn't for his tenacity i don't know if some of this would have happened with the you know he's uh, worked very well with the folks in alaska and we're just very excited to see how what 2017 has to hold for that you know and there's a, a good point in there is that uh, up in the last conference in alaska a month ago uh, george was the height of the was the uh, the, the height of the event, and uh, um, he took away the show. Basically, people kept saying George Purdy's name, and we had him on <laughs> panels, and he was uh, so eloquent in coming forth on the, again, the community involvement and the educational component, which a lot of those folks had not paid attention to. Yeah, and right. so if George can lead us in that direction, Mike was following footsteps here on Oahu, uh, these are things that can be exported from Hawaii to the other states. True. Uh, through True. our Pan Pacific yeah. Unmanned Air Systems Test Range complex <laughs> so in conclusion to our show i mean it's really an appreciation for what 2016 has to offer or had to offer i mean we made a long uh, journey here and moving on to our next year mike thank you for coming thank you me. mike thank you for and, all you've been doing oh yeah. absolutely appreciate no, it thank appreciate you it. i mean we're striving that's the main thing and and ted of course thank you for letting me co-host here today <laughs> all right, all right, uh, out yeah. to the community Thank you again, and um, aloha to you folks. Happy New Year. Happy New Year. Happy New Year, everyone. See you all next year. <laughs> all right.